This is Precalc 12, Chapter 5.4. We're going to look at logarithms and logarithmic functions. Logarithms are used to express many everyday quantities. And we need logarithms because they're also the inverse of exponential functions when you're using the same base. One example of logarithms is musical notes. There's 12 semitones in an octave. Each octave is double the frequency of the previous octave. The lowest note that we have is C0. That's 16.35 hertz. That's a decimal value, so it's not too convenient. A more convenient initial value to use is A1, which is 55 hertz. That's the A note in the second octave. The first octave is zero. Uh, middle C is C4. So that's in the fifth octave, and the frequency is 261.63 hertz. A full piano has 88 keys, so it goes from A0 to C8. So looking at this, this is eight plus octaves. Here's some more examples of logarithms. Earthquake magnitudes. Each increase of one on the magnitude scale is an increase of 31.6 times the amount of energy. You can feel earthquakes that have a magnitude between three and four, which is roughly 10 metric tons of TNT, otherwise known as dynamite. A magnitude eight to nine earthquake is five more than a magnitude three to four earthquake. So this is 31.6 to the power of five or roughly 31 million times the amount of energy of a magnitude three to four earthquake. Sound is measured in decibels, which is one tenth of a bell. An increase of one bell is an increase of 10 times the amount of power. Normal talking is at about 60 decibels. And the legal limit for sound for cars and motorcycles is about 90 decibels. A jackhammer is 110 decibels. And hearing damage occurs at 120 decibels, uh, given a short amount of exposure time. Another place where logarithms are used is alkalinity for chemistry, when we measure pH. An increase of one in pH means that the alkalinity goes up by a factor of 10. A decrease of one means the acidity goes up by a factor of 10. Okay, so let's look at some actual numerical examples. 1 is equal to 10 to the power of 0, 10 is equal to 10 to the power of 1, 100 is equal to 10 to the power of 2. Let's see if you notice a pattern here. Log 10 of 1 is 0, log 10 of 10 is 1, log 10 of 100 is 2, log 10 of 1000 is 3. So what you should be noticing is that the log of the value is equal to the exponent of the base. So 10 to the power of zero is one, 10 to the power of one is 10, 10 to the power of two is 100. So that's the pattern. Log two of eight is the exponent here, which is three. Log two of 256 is the exponent here, which is eight. If we have negative exponents, then we're looking at one over 10 to the power of two, which is 0 0.01. So log 10 of 0 0.01 is the exponent, negative two. And here, log two of 0.25 is negative two. Here's your formal definition of logarithm. The logarithm of a number is an exponent. So log B of C is the power to which B gets raised to to get C. Okay, the base of the logarithm is the same as the base of the power. When we have log b of c equal to a, then c is equal to b to the power of a. And we have conditions where b is greater than zero, b does not equal one, and c is greater than zero. The reason we don't have b equal to 1 is because if we have the base as 1, the only value we can actually evaluate is c is equal to 1. Okay, the definition of a logarithmic function, well, we just have a variable. So y is equal to log b of x. 
B must be greater than zero, and again, B does not equal one. And this is the inverse of the exponential function y is equal to b to the power of x. The domain for y is equal to log b of x is x is greater than or equal to zero. And the range of this simple log function is y is all reals. The vertical asymptote is x equals zero. Now using our calculator, the calculator only uses log base 10 and log base e. E is roughly 2.71828 dot dot dot. It's an irrational number. E is used for calculus. So if we want to calculate log 10 of 80, we just do log 80 on our calculator and we get 1.9. If we want to do log base 2 of 80, we need to do log 80 divided by log 2 on our calculator and this will give us 6.3. If we want to do log 2 of 0.25, again, we need to do log 0.25 divided by log 2. And this gives us a value of negative 2. And you can check this out. 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 2 to the power of 2. This is 1 over 4, and that equals 0.25. Log 100 of 1 is 0. You don't need to divide by log 100, but you can do it anyways because log one equals zero. And if you divide that by any other log, it's still gonna be zero. Okay, let's look at some different problems. Write four as a logarithm with base three. Okay, so we need log three, and we want this equal to four. So three to the power of four, if we use the base as the base of the power, these will cancel out and we get four. And that's the simplest way to do this. And we need to simplify this. Log three, three to the power of four is 81, and that's four. Another type of problem that you'll be given is estimating the log. The book teaches you benchmarks, but I prefer not to do that because benchmark requires a calculator. I'm gonna teach you a method that doesn't require a calculator and that's called linear interpolation. So if we wanna estimate log two of 28, we need to do log two of 16, that equals four. Log two of 32 equals five. So we're finding the next lower log that has an integer value and the next higher log that has an integer value. So our answer must be between four and five. So we write four here, we write 16 down here, we write five over here, we write 32 over here. So we just take these values and we wanna do a linear interpolation. And we also need to write 28 here. 28 minus 16, is 12. 32 minus 16 is 16. We can think of this as the slope, but it's also the linear interpolation because the slope of a line is linear. So we know the base value is 4, so our answer is 4 and 12 sixteenths. And this simplifies to four and three quarters. This answer is roughly 4.75. Now, if we do two to the power of 4.75, we get roughly 26.9, and that's pretty close to 28. If we look at the actual log, two of 28, that's 4.8. Again, that's pretty close to 4.75. So this line is 1 16th, because this is the slope, of x minus 16, because this is our point, plus 4, this is our value at 4. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're using point slope form here. This is our value 16, 4. This is our value 28 
and 4.75 on the line. This is y is equal to log 2 of x. You can see how close this line approximates log 2 of x in this interval. Outside of this interval, it doesn't approximate it very well. So the note here is, look at how close the linear approximation is to y is equal to log 2 of x. Okay, and again, the benchmark method is in the book, but don't use it. It won't help you when you don't have a calculator. So let's look at one more example. Log 4 of 68. So the lowest integer value is log 4 of 64, which is 3. And the next higher one is log 4 of 256, and that's equal to 4. So we write 3, we write 64, we write 4, we write 256, and the value that we want is 68. So we estimate, and we have 3 plus 68 minus 64 over 256 minus 64. And this is 3 and 4 over 192, or 3 and 1 over 48. And as a decimal value, it's 3.0208, roughly. 4 to the power of 3.0208 is roughly 65.87. And the actual log 4 of 68 is 3.0437. And that concludes this lesson.